This is Gaelic Park, New York, the home of the Gaelic Athletic Association in that big American city. Situated on 240th Street and Broadway, a little spot of Ireland, they say, in the center of the skyscrapers and buildings that make New York. And here, each Sunday, some of the hundreds of thousands of Irish who live in this big city come to Gaelic Park to capture the atmosphere of being at home. Here they can start the day with four or maybe five games of hurling or football and stay on for dancing well into the night. Gaelic Park, as I say, a part of Ireland in a faraway country. A park that has some innovations, such as this clock, which many people think should be used at home in Ireland. And that hooter that you heard was in fact the hooter which signals that it was half time in a game. This clock, well there's the hooter again. This clock starts when the ball is thrown in and it automatically stops and hoots at the end of the half hour. Something that has been suggested to be used at home in games and there are many people who think that it would be a very good idea indeed. Could I talk to you for just a moment please? Could you come down here for just a second we have a word about this clock of yours. Yeah. Uh, you're the man who operates the clock? Yes sir. Uh, how does it work? Well, it's worked by electricity. You plug it in and it runs for a half an hour. And then at the, half an hour, at the half hour, the buzzer goes. And that's it? That's, that's all for half time. Well, say that the uh, team was attacking and they got a 70 yards puck, or a 50 as the case may be, just as the buzzer sounded. What had happened then? The, the ball, had to, the free had to be taken, but nobody could touch it. He'd have, he'd have, the guy would have to score direct in order to have a score. No other body could help out in it. Just the same as if... Uh, the referee looked at his watch and found that the time yeah, was up. Yeah, yeah, the very same way, yeah. Uh, does the hooter ever fail to work or anything like that? No, it never fails, no. Do you L think last year we had a bit of trouble, but Mr O'Donnell fixed it up and uh, it's going perfect now. It's going perfect? Yeah. In other words, it's a foolproof clock. Oh, yeah, you, you can't beat it. Well, uh, you've been at the games at home in Ireland, I'm sure. Yeah. You are Irish, I gather. I'm County Clare. What part? Kilmel, you're from Clare. Kilmel, I know it well. <laughs> 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 you've been at games back at home. Oh, yeah, plenty of games. Uh, do you think that uh, this clock would be a good idea at home? I think it would be a great idea in Croke Park, or any park in Ireland. Because a minute or two with a referee, if he's in favour of a team, he can, uh, he can swing the game right there. I see it happening in the old country. Well, uh, shall we put it this way? Is there any way of fiddling the clock, if no, you know what I mean? No, I can't touch it. I can't do a damn thing with it. <laughs> I have to wait till the buzzer goes. You have that, to wait till the buzzer goes yeah, and I that's it? I can't do nothing. You can't do a thing? No. right oh. <laughs> What's your name? Uh, Philip Dennehy. And where do you come from originally? From uh, Dublin, Belton Park. Belton Park? Belton Park, yes. Do you come to Gaelic Park regularly? Every Sunday. Every Sunday? Every Sunday. Uh, why? Well, what brings you here every Sunday? Well, the games. I'm interested in the GAA. I'm active in it here and uh, without the park we'd have no place to go on a Sunday. It's really a great thing for the Irish out here to have some place to come on a Sunday. What does coming to Gaelic Park mean to you? Well, means to come up here and spend the Sunday here, you know, and watch the games. Pretty good. Well, uh, would you not uh, say, like, go to the beach or something like that no, in the summer like the instead? Beach. You don't like the no, beach? No, I'd rather come up here and get burned up here. What do you think coming to Gaelic Park means to the Irish in New York? Well, I know to me, the first thing is to see the Irish games, but of course there's a few other reasons too. <laughs> For example? I've well, we made a lot of friends here, and a lot of Irish girls from here. A name that is synonymous with the GA in New York, and of course with Gaelic Park, is John O'Donnell. John, when did Gaelic Park become a GAA venue? In 1928, Michal, when P.J. Grimes and the late Billy Snow took over here. And it's been a GAA park ever since? That's right. When, when did John O'Donnell move into it? Well, he came in in 1944. And I'm here since, thanks be to God. And various other helps that I got. <laughs> well, look, looking all around us, we see all these buildings that are coming up around the park. Uh, what are the possibilities of the park staying as Gaelic Park? Oh, as long as the Lord spares me, I'd say the possibilities are very good. When I'm called up above, of course, anything can happen. 
<laughs> John, to get down to the uh, park itself as a centre for the Irish, do you feel that it is something essential for the Irish to have a park like this? Well, it all depends on what essential means. Uh, so far as uh, having a place where the Irish meet and talk about home, as we always do, some, a place like this is essential. Uh, with regard to uh, participation in American events, and after all, we are in America, I suppose from that point of view, you could get along without it. But it would be sadly missed by all of us who had the good fortune to be born in Ireland. Well, say that for some horrible reason that Gaelic Park ceased to exist, what would the GA in New York do for a playing pitch? Oh, the GA in New York could find one. But there doesn't seem to be an awful lot of open space or green grass around here. Well, not in the city, but there are a lot of wide open spaces here too. John, it has often been said at home in Ireland that uh, when a team comes out here, that the crowd of 10 or 12,000, well, that it might be bigger because of so many Irish people in America. Well, that's always the cry at home, but we are quite satisfied with 12,000. You had a game at home last Sunday between your t two top teams, and you had only 23,000. I wonder where the critics are when a thing like that happens. You're quite satisfied that the 12,000 is a reasonable attendance? I think it's very good. Do you think that the visits of the teams from Ireland to the States to play the New York teams, that they are good out here? It's a grand thing to have teams come here and equally fine for our lads to go home. After all, what is in the game? This is an amateur game. And if you can get a trip out of it or for the top team, or look forward to it, well, I think it takes away something from our games. John, there has been a suggestion at home that a uh, subject getting an airing over here is that uh, the New York hurlers might figure in the All-Ireland series at home. Uh, any particular comment on that? I have views, certainly. I think that uh, we have a right to differ in opinions, but I think the purpose of the association is the same. And just because a man is here in America, I don't think he's le any less Irish, any less a Gael, and I don't think because he's here he should be deprived of something that goes on at home. Now there's a lot of meowing at home about the tough winters they had. We have tough winters here too. And believe me, I'd rather, as a player in my younger days, play in a winter in Ireland than under the blazing sun here in New York City. We don't get ready by push buttons here. We have sweat and tears and everything else here, just like the poor lads home have during the winter. But if the hurling team from New York went into the All-Ireland series, would you envisage them going in in, say, Munster or Leinster or going in in the semi-final stage? We would certainly be governed by what the Central Council or a Provincial Council would think best for the association. We're not thinking of ourselves. We'd just like to be a part of something that is part of us. John Gaelic Park, it starts operations early in the morning here in, in the oh, height yeah. of the season. Uh, well, what's an average program here at Gaelic Park? You mean uh, from the game's point of view? Yes, the, the whole day, from the time oh, the, the gate opens tour. until it closes. Well, we, like you, you put down the kettle, we put down the coffee ovens here in the morning, <laughs> and we keep going until 11 o'clock at night. We have five games during the day, and you can dance or sing and have a drink or a bite to eat. In other words, it's more than just going to a match. It's uh, a bit of old Ireland, as they say, here in the heart of New York. Some fellas come here to, to the park and they don't even see a match. <laughs> Would you explain that one a little bit to me? Well, we have a lot of other attractions here. <laughs> <laughs> right, oh, John, and right now there seems to be quite an attraction in this hurling game here between the New York first and the New York second teams. Play directly right in towards the goal now. And it's over the bar and a point for New York and number two. Both teams now on level terms. New York number one in white, one point. New York and number two in seven and blue, one point. Lefty, can I interrupt you for just a little while? You know, this idea of a, a commentary on the game, it isn't done at home. How long has it been done here in New York? Well, Michal, it's my honour for the last 18 years to bring the highlight play of five games here each Sunday at Gaelic Park. The, we don't ad-lib on it because it might bore the attendance in back. It's only just to pick out the team players and those that perform during the progress of the hour. Just to identify them to as To identify play. them as they make their play. Well, in 
five, five games in one day, uh, that must take a little bit of working out, shall we say. Well, it takes a kind of uh, a little uh, judgment <laughs> after a good six hours, you might as well say, not five here, especially in a hot day here at New York in Gaelic Park. Uh, Michal, you know, we have also done the international games and not knowing the players that came from the old land, I uh, admire the great assistance that you have always given me because you had already known the numbers of the players and that's how I was able to pick them up for the benefit of the public that patronized those games here well, it's with all the teams from Ireland. Certainly, Lefty, it's a wonderful help to the people here the way you, you pick out the players for them. Uh, do you remember the game back a few years ago that you did for Radio Ireland before. Have you any recollections of that one? The me, the New York, wasn't I it? I certainly have, me Hall. I was in the Polo Grounds and it was my first experience of ever doing an international game. The Galway Hills were playing New York. I was high up in the air for the New York and me the game. And in my own American way, I never had done that job before. And all I did was to perform the same as I do at Gailey Park. And I tried my best on that occasion. But sometimes my Yankee words didn't go <laughs> So very well over there with the boys and girls from home. Well, the, but send, the it was sending a good happens try. both ways, you know. But they don't understand me too well over here at times either. <laughs> Lefty, where did you come from originally? Well, I'm born and raised here in the city of New York. I was put in Ireland once in 1955, and it was my pleasure to see Dublin and Kerry play the All Ireland Football Final. My late father came from Newmarket and Fergus County Clare, from home with one of great Clare hurlers, Bob Daddy, and my mother from Mullinahone, County Tipperary. That's the home of Charles J. Kickham. Both are now dead, but that's where my parents came from, and I was brought up with an Irish spirit. And well, that's why I love the games of Ireland. Well, Lefty, I think we, we've taken you long enough from the public here at Gaelic Park. Thank you very much, and you better get back to the action now. You are welcome, Me <laughs> Hall. Thank now you. back into play after that interview with Me Hall O'Hare. Ladies and gentlemen, who's here today, represent television and radio air.